Let's get on with uh, today's um, today's webinar. Uh, make your agency famous in 2017. Um, I suppose um, when we were kind of preparing for this webinar, it kind of got me got me to thinking. You know, what what is fame and uh, what does that uh, mean in today's kind of celebrity obsessed um, world? Uh, so I thought uh, I had uh, uh, a little bit of time to spare at the weekend, so I thought I'd look up in the Oxford English, English Dictionary and what fame is. And it's a state of being known by many people. That's the uh, dictionary definition, which is all well and good if you're looking to make a name for yourself on The Voice or uh, Britain's Got Talent. But what does that really mean for agencies? So um, I just think about what agency fame means uh, to us here at the Drum and the Drum Network um, and kind of came up with, um, with these kind of five points. Uh, and we believe that um, being famous uh, in terms of an agency, it means having an agency brand that's instantly recognized by uh, clients, potential employees, and other potential partners. Um, being instantly known for what services you supply, um, be that digital branding, advertising, PR, whatever. Um, also, I suppose, some instant uh, kind of recognition um, of who you uh, supply those services to, who your kind of key clients are, and who, who are the brands you uh, are particularly uh, well known for looking after. Um, also, um, being regarded as a credible and stable business um, from a client point of view as well. Um, being regarded as a, as a solid business um, is very important. Um, and also um, being regarded uh, as a credible and stable employer is equally as important. Um, and we'll get onto that uh, in a little uh, a little while. Um, so why do you need to be famous? I suppose as an, as an ambitious growing agency, which all of you uh, People on the call today are, um, or you wouldn't be here. Um, you know, why do you need to be um, famous? Why do you uh, why do you need your agents to be well known? And why do you need to kind of cover the five points that we've just uh, just kind of covered off? Um, I've been asked these questions many many times over the last 17 years, um, and I've kind of uh, boiled it down to kind of um, kind of five or six kind of key points. Um, I suppose the uh, the first one is obviously related to new business um, and new clients. It's very uh, very cliched, but obviously new business is the life of any growing agency. Um, so you need to raise your profile and maintain that profile um, to ensure that clients out there in what I think we can all admit is a really, really competitive and congested marketplace uh, so that they know who you are. Um, you've got to keep up with the Joneses um, in this day and age of social media and so on, and uh, you want to get noticed. Um, by as many clients as possible. Um, as I said, um, lots of people have always asked me as a journalist at the drum, you know, why bother? Why bother sending press releases into the drum? And um, you know, why is it so important to get your kind of news and your, your name into the into the pages of the drum or onto the onto the uh, online pages of the drum? And I suppose my kind of response to that has always been, well, um, if you're not doing it, you can guarantee that your kind of competitors are and your rivals are. So um, if you're not kind of playing the game, so to speak, and getting your, uh, your kind of stuff out there into the marketplace, then uh, you, will be, uh, you will be losing out um, to your competitors because you can guarantee, well, I can guarantee <laughs> uh, that they all are sending in the press releases and things like that. So it's, it's much better to be on the bus than, uh, than not on the bus, I suppose, from that point of view. Um, also, um, kind of moving on to... Um, you know why it's very important to kind of keep a keep a high profile is obviously to support your new business activity. I'm sure you're doing a lot of uh, new business activity. Um, you've got new business strategies and things like that. Um, and in fact, actually, this morning I got uh, I received a, a quite a funky little piece of direct marketing from a from a company over in Ireland. Actually, um, I didn't recognise the company, and the first thing I did was actually Google them. Um, you know, to see what they were all about. And I think that's probably what all the clients that you're approaching, be that through direct mail or e-shots, e newsletters, whatever, um, whatever you're using, uh, chances are they, uh, the first thing they do if they don't recognize you inst instantly is Google you. Um, and I think it's really important this, in this day and age to have a lot of content out there, um, you know, that kind of lets people know what you're doing. So uh, when those clients do jump onto Google, they can find you instantly and get a, a, a quick overview of what you're all about as, a, as an agency. Also, I mean, um, to maintain the credibility with current clients, obviously you are uh, hopefully got good relationships with your current clients. Um, I think clients also like to know that they're working with an agency that's, you know, an important part of the industry, is well respected, is liked, um, whose voice is sought by uh, the media and whose opinions and, and, and so on are kind of valued and recognized by the industry. So again, it's quite important uh, from that point of view to make sure that as an agency you've got a voice out there in the marketplace. Um, we did kind of cover this a little bit earlier on, but um, you know it's a massive, uh, massive part of uh, today's kind of um, industry is uh, being noticed by the brightest talent out there in the marketplace. It's um, it's obviously kind of a war for talent going on out there. I think that's been going on for certainly uh, every year that I've been working at the drum. 
um, that's probably getting worse. Um, you know, it's it's really really difficult to uh, recruit people um, in this day and age. Um, not only to recruit people, but also to kind of um, keep them on you, keep them with you. Um, so it's really important um, to make sure that you've got high profile as an agency um, to uh, to get people to notice you. Because if they don't know you exist and they don't know what you do and they don't know who you do it for, um, then they can't really want to come and work for you. Um, and kind of obviously. Um, Kind of connected that it's very important to uh, uh, to retain your best people and obviously keep a real buzz around your agency and the uh, staff like nothing more than obviously seeing the name of their agency out there in the in the media uh, people talking about the agency getting excited about it um, I certainly know from a from a drum point of view um, there's lots of excitement in here when we kind of uh, uh, when we enter awards and we get nominated for awards and things like that uh, you get a real buzz around the office which uh, which is a really really positive thing for the for the business and I think that's definitely the same for agencies. Um, and also, I know um, probably not many of you are, are at this stage at the moment, but it's certainly probably something you've kind of thought about um, for somewhere down the down the road. But um, you know, maintaining a high profile as an agency is really important, so you can get on the radar of potential acquirers or certainly investors who can help you take your your business to the next uh, to the next level of its uh, its journey. Um, we actually did an event quite recently with. Um, uh, Green Square, the merger and acquisitions experts, and Tony Walford um, was kind of talking about this, how important this is from an acquirer's point of view, how they like to see a really longer history of agencies kind of, um, you know, having a high profile in the in the um, in the marketplace and people talking about them, and how important that is, and how um, a lot of agencies kind of leave it leave it too late almost, and um, they might leave it uh, till the year before they want to want to sell the business, and so they'll kind of start a real you know, push to get some uh, kind of content and stuff out there into the media. But by that point, it's almost too late. Um, you know, because it's um, it doesn't really add any value to the business because it's easy to look back and say, well, I've, they've only been kind of getting media coverage for the last year. So, um, so it's really important to kind of not uh, not put that on on hold um, and just kind of get the ball rolling as soon as you can. Really, as I say it might not be something you're thinking about, thinking about now, but certainly in five to ten years' time, when you when you might be at that stage of your kind of journey. Um, having that to kind of history, that backlog of of, of uh, kind of content is really important, and will do you uh, the world of good. Um, as I say I've mentioned the C word quite a lot during this uh, kind of webinar already, but uh, uh, this is ultimately how the drum can help you uh, make your agency famous. It's uh, it's kind of buzzword at the moment. Content. Uh, we live in the age of content. It's absolutely vital uh, that you that you ensure your agency is creating good, relevant content and getting it out there. Um, into the marketplace. Well, I suppose it's also important uh, for agents to know what is considered uh, good content. And um, I suppose you could say content king at the moment, uh, and the drum is the king of marketing content. And I suppose that might sound uh, rather rather big-headed, um, but I do have some stats to back that up. Um, the drum's website is now the most read uh, uh, European website for marketing news and information. Um, and here are some stats that kind of back that up. Uh, these are just some of our kind of uh, reader reader um, analytics from October to December, the back end of last year. Actually, not the greatest um, time to look at because I think most people knocked off for Christmas around about the 16th of December. So, uh, kind of the last two weeks of that month were probably very very quiet. But as you can see, uh, the drums kind of get getting kind of four and a half million uh, page views um, every quarter. Um, you know, so that's a real big chunk of uh, chunk of kind of marketing readers coming onto the website to to read. So it's a, it's a great audience. It's a, it's a very varied audience. Um, lots and lots of clients in there. Um, all sorts of kind of digital platforms and so on. So it's a very good platform to get your kind of content out through um, to help uh, make your agency famous. Also, I've um, kind of pulled up these uh, the social uh, stats as well for the drum. As you'll see, we've got. Um, 35,000 Facebook fans, 226,000 Twitter followers, uh, 6,600 LinkedIn contacts, and the YouTube channel is now uh, got over 5,700 subscribers, and that's becoming a really important channel as well, uh, video content for the drum. Um, so that's uh, what we're doing social. So as I say, it's, it's not just the drum website. I mean, um, the content that is posted on the drum website really does kind of go, um, here you go, here, there, and everywhere, it just travel a, a, a long distance. Um, so, I suppose we'll, just to give you some kind of insights on uh, the kind of content that we want from you as agencies, so kind of content that works from us, uh, for us, uh, from a content point of view, but also content that works for you um, and gets the kind of right uh, the right stories out into the into the um, into the marketplace. So, obviously, news, and I'll kind of uh, give you a wee overview shortly um, 
you know, just exactly what that what that means. Uh, but we want to know what you're doing, what you're up to. Um, we're desperate to know uh, kind of what your opinions are and what your insights are into the various things that are going on um, in the industry at the moment. This has become a much more important part of the Drum website over the last uh, kind of three to four years. I think people traditionally used to come to a website like the Drum to uh, to get the news, to get you know find out who was doing you know who was doing what with who and who was moving where and what clients were appointing, what agencies, that still definitely happens. Um, but I think what we've seen over the last three years or so is how much more important um, insight and opinions have become. I think people are now very, very short of time. So they come to a, a platform like the Drum, um, not just to get kind of news, but they actually want to learn things. They want to kind of get information that they can then take away uh, and use you know, for their own ends. So um, it's become much more of a kind of a learning platform over the last few years. Um, so opinion and insight content is really, really important. Uh, features obviously still a massive part of of what we do. Um, so we want to know your feature ideas. Um, I think essentially what what we've done over the last kind of thirty odd years here at the Drum is kind of built the platform that can get um, information and content out to a to a huge marketplace. But what we do need is what is in your heads and in the heads of the people who work at your agency. That's all the expertise and all the skills. Um, so we've got the platform. We need you to kind of bring the bring the expertise, the skills. Uh, the experiences and the insights um, so that we can uh, kind of create content and get that out to the readers. And obviously creative work is still a massive part of what the drum is all about. It's always been a very creative um, magazine and platform. Um, creative work is still very important to us. Uh, and we've obviously got the Creative Works platform online. Um, that's where all of the uh, kind of creative work that's produced uh, by agencies is showcased. Uh, written about and rated and all those kind of things. So, um, if you've not been onto that platform, make sure you have a jump on there and have a look at it. It's, it really is worth. Uh, it's Gillian West who um, who manages that platform, so it's really worth getting in touch with Gillian um, and kind of trying to start some sort of dialogue um, so you can get involved with that, so clients out there can see you know what you're capable of from a creative point of view. Okay, I said I'd get to this, and I I have heard what makes news. This is um, obviously this is based on. Uh, my, kind of my time with the drum, I suppose. Um, but these are the kind of stories that typically will get picked up by the drum. Um, new business wins, obviously. Um, they work for us because everybody wants to know who's, you know, what clients are appointing, what agencies, and so on. Um, obviously, also work from you, uh, from your, from an agency's point of view, because um, it helps to it helps you to kind of, you know, show all the clients that you know what, what you're capable of and who who uh, who you're working with, what sectors you're active in, and all that sort of stuff. So, any new business wins are always always good. Obviously, uh, the bigger blue chip brands um, get the most traffic, as you would expect. Um, but even some of the smaller smaller clients, kind of some of the SMEs out there, do some really interesting things, some really innovative stuff, uh, particularly online. So, um, that stuff is always uh, of interest to us. Um, also, kind of uh, senior senior appointments or um, kind of director level, I suppose, or certainly appointments that we're going to are going to change uh, uh, game changing for the agency. Going to move on to the next level. Um, we always like to know about those um, new campaigns and projects that you're working on. Um, obviously, um, you're kind of putting new work out into the marketplace on a regular basis. So we do like to know um, about all that stuff. And I did mention the Creative Works um, platform there as well, uh, which is a good one to get involved in. Um, ROI, return on investment, obviously become much more important recently um, in the digital age. So if you've done any campaigns or any projects, then it's got incredible uh, return on investment then. Uh, we'd like to know about that. Um, that can be a news piece, but then obviously we could kind of turn that more into a kind of like a, an insight piece on how you actually achieve that and things like that. So that's something you can let us know about. Um, obviously, lots of new tech being developed uh, every kind of week at the moment, it seems. So if you're working on anything as an agency, um, then do let us know. Um, about that, and also obviously mergers and acquisitions. If you're um, acquiring other businesses, or you're being acquired, or you're merging with uh, other agencies out there, then that's always good uh, good editorial content for us. Um, so do let us know all about that. Um, I've kind of included this as well. Uh, this is kind of based again based on my experiences uh, of editing the drum, and also. Um, what I know of the of the kind of drums editorial uh, team at the moment, these are the kind of things that they consider not to be news. Um, so my advice to you is is don't waste your time uh, sending things like this in because they won't get picked up. Uh, new agency identities, new agency websites, the new offices, unless it's an overseas expansion, um, probably won't get picked up. The um, the thinking there is the well, the issue is that if they do start to to kind of cover all of these um, these types of stories, then there are 
you know, approximately 30,000 agencies in the UK at the moment. So if they all sent in a new agency identity story or a new website, then uh, the JUMS kind of editorial content would very soon get swamped with this sort of stuff. So um, the policy at the moment is, is, uh, is we don't kind of touch these things. But um, as I say, new offices, if it's an overseas expansion, you're going into a new marketplace, then that's absolutely, that's absolutely fine. That would be a good piece. Um, but if it's just a new office down the road, then it probably wouldn't get picked up. Um, awards, again, um, unless it's an exceptional award or there's a particularly interesting story behind it, again, the, the danger is there that obviously agencies are winning awards um, all the time. Um, and you know, if we cover one, then we'd have to cover them all. So again, it's just a, it's, um, it's a kind of policy that we don't uh, cover them at the moment. Um, and also kind of lower level staff appointments, um, anything kind of on the, under a direct level. Um, wouldn't necessarily get picked up as a news piece. Again, unless there's a particularly interesting angle to it. Um, they may have worked somewhere else. They may have come some, from somewhere particularly interesting. Um, if you've got an angle to it, um, then it's worth kind of talking to the journalist about that and just explaining that, uh, that angle to them. Um, what makes a good insight article? Um, pretty straightforward. Try and make it as topical as you can. Uh, my advice is to kind of try and track the news, the news content that's going out through the drum or even um, the new, the the drums kind of content is actually um, quite often um, closely associated with kind of quite a mainstream news um, agenda. So, you know, things are going out through the BBC, which are actually relevant to the marketing and tech industry. So, if you see something on the BBC, a news story or something being talked about, and you think your agency should have an insight into that, um, then that's also that's always worth kind of getting in touch with the drum and, and trying to sell that idea into them. Um, make it relevant, obviously. Um, try and make it relevant to marketing and tech. Um, keep it honest, um, you know, be as honest as you can, be as open as honest as you can. Um, and if you can kind of obviously show evidence to back up your any claims or, or analysis you're making, um, that will make the piece a lot stronger. Um, just a couple of um, uh, points, you know, if you are looking um, to write an insight piece and uh, events, I mean, there's quite a lot, we're kind of at that time of year now, there's quite a lot coming up, uh, like Mobile World Congress at the moment, South by Southwest, Ad Week next month. So there's loads and loads of things going on in the industry that you can actually go along to. Um, and if you sit and listen to a good speaker, you you know, you go, you go attend a good panel discussion or something like that. Um, if there's something that you can get, um, a little piece of insight you can get in there, you can craft a piece around, and then that's always a good way um, to get something into to the drum. And also research and white papers. I know a lot of agencies obviously do their own research and uh, publish their own white papers. Um, they're always good as well. What uh, the drum tends to do in this, this instance is look at the kind of top line findings um, and we can craft kind of a news piece out of that um, and then potentially link to the, uh, to the white paper or something like that. Uh, now moving on to good opinion article. Um, again, as I said, with insight, make it make it as current as you can. Again, track the news agenda, see what the what the news news agenda is saying. Um, and if you feel that your agency should have an opinion on this, be it obviously the big things at the moment are automation and um, artificial intelligence and things like that. Um, if you think you should have an opinion on it, let us know about that, um, and we can have a, a chat about that. Um, I suppose my one kind of huge piece of advice here is is uh, writing good opinion articles is actually have an opinion. Um, you know, quite often the most disappointing thing is you'll get a piece sent in and it's got a really, really good headline. You think this is going to be a great piece, um, and the first paragraph's great, but then it kind of the opinion kind of disappears, and it just becomes kind of an overview piece of a new piece of tech or whatever it may be. So, um, my advice is if you want to grab the, the journalist's attention, then do have a strong opinion and try and be as outspoken as you can. Um, a good journalist will never let you get yourself into any trouble. They'll uh, always obviously edit the piece before it goes out, and they'll uh, try and keep you on the on the right side of the law, so to speak, um, but do have a strong opinions. Uh, so you know, use those opinions obviously to kind of develop debate and get comments going and get some uh, discussion going around the piece. Um, and also, obviously, make it and try and make it entertaining. I know everybody's not uh, an entertaining writer, but certainly don't be afraid to try and be entertaining. Don't be afraid to, you know, inject some humour um, into your copy. Um, I know things are serious, but you know, it's 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 the kind of the marketing industry. It's supposed to be a um, you know a, a fun industry. So um, you know, remember, you know, it's it's good to try and entertain people as opposed uh, you know, as opposed to always just trying to educate them as well. Uh, remember to share it socially. Obviously, that probably goes without saying because we we all do that. Um, and another kind of piece of advice as well is never if it, if you are uh, writing an opinion piece, never never try and sell your agency through it. Um, directly uh, kind of use your opinions use your insights your your expertise to kind of sell yourselves rather than 
you know, using phrases like award-winning or leading this, that, and the other, um, because chances are they'll get edited out anyway. So um, <clears throat> try and avoid doing stuff like that because it just puts journalists off. They don't uh, don't tend to like that sort of stuff. Um, how to get more coverage? How to get on the good side of journalists? Um, I suppose try to get get to know journalists, um, which is really hard nowadays. And um, certainly harder uh, than when I was kind of uh, working as a journalist and an editor on the drum a few years ago. Um, the drum, the drum website, for instance, I think is updated, you know, kind of 70 to 80 times a day with new kind of news pieces and um, opinion and insight pieces. So uh, the journalists are um, often kind of tied to the desks, feeding that beast. So it's quite difficult to get them away from the desk uh, for a coffee or for lunch or uh, for whatever it may be. Um, but it is kind of worth persevering and trying to do that. A good way to do that is uh, bumping into them at uh, kind of conferences and events. And things like that. Places where they are, anyway. Um, they, we've got quite a few writers over at uh, um, Mobile World Congress this week over in Barcelona. We've got, I think, four going out to uh, South by Southwest. There'll be lots of people at Ad Week. So um, those types of places are very, very good uh, environments to um, to meet uh, journalists and get to know them. Um, I suppose um, building kind of building relationships. Um, one way is is to kind of pass on news tips. I mean. Uh, try to become a good source of news for, for these journalists when you do meet them. And not just news about your own agency, but obviously we all hear things going around about uh, other agencies and brands and, and so on. Uh, if you can become an, a, good, uh, a good source for news, <clears throat> then you become a very, you'll become a very valued contact for a journalist. So if you can try and do that, that is always good. Um, and always try and make yourself available to comment if uh, a journalist ever contacts your agency. Um, looking for some sort of insight or input to a feature or a, a news piece or anything like that. Uh, try, I know um, you're probably very busy, but uh, try and make yourself available because if you make yourself available once then, um, by nature, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but journalists are quite lazy um, and if you give them uh, a good comment then they'll come back to you uh, kind of time and time again um, if they know they can make one phone call and get, uh, get the good, so to speak, uh, save them going around the houses. So um, if you can make yourself available, do that. Um, don't be afraid to go off the record. Um, Again, not just in terms of uh, kind of your own agency and what you're doing. And uh, what journalists do like to do is kind of get a um, a stack of content behind them, uh, so they can kind of feed it through to their news editor or their editor. Um, so it makes them look good as if they've got kind of a ready stream of um, of content coming through from agencies. Um, and if you can, if you're happy enough to go off the record and tell them, you know, we're doing this with this uh, brand at the moment. I can't talk about it yet, but you know, if you give me two or three weeks, I'll give you the full story. Um, they can make a kind of diary note of that to chase that up, um, and it's just it just helps them, um, and it makes them look, as I say, it makes them look good in front of their editor that seem to be able to pull uh, pull good stories uh, out of thin air. Uh, that's good. And also another piece of advice is if you are sending in a press release, don't jump the gun. Always try and make sure that you've got the client sign off um, to uh, to put a press release out there if it's about a business win or a new piece of work. Um, what what journalists hate more, certainly I know the drum team hate more than anything, is when they put, put a story up onto the website and then they get a call uh, an hour or two later asking them if they can take it down because it's not been signed off by the client. So um, always try and make sure you get the client uh, to have a quick look over it, make sure they're happy with it um, before you send it in. Um, because as I say, that's not good. Um, now I know there's, there's quite a lot in there, and if that all sounds quite uh, quite horrifically hard work, um, then we do have a different uh, uh, a different way, a quicker solution uh, for you. It's the Drum Network. It's the part of the business that myself and Chris work on. Um, and that there is, is, is what we do. The uh, Drum Network exists to help agencies like you to raise the profile, get noticed by the right people, and ensure that they have access to the Drum's 1 million plus online readers um, every every month. Um, Drum Network has been operating now as part of the Drum business for seven years. Um, we work with 150 agencies um, based right across the UK, uh, into Europe, and over in Asia now as well. Um, there's five of us working um, on the Drum Network in here at the Drum, um, and we are kind of very uh, uh, dedicated to helping our members get maximum value out of the membership um, package. There are two membership levels, Premium and Elite. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the benefits that you get as a member. Um, to be brutally honest, there's quite a lot to the package. Um, they can all be seen on our website uh, and in that kind of brochure, which uh, we'll send over to you after after this webinar. Um, but there's quite a lot in there, so I won't uh, I won't take time going through that uh, at the moment. Um, but what I'll I'll just quickly outline kind of the main points why um, why seven, uh, why agencies join the 
uh, drum network in the first place. And I suppose why around about 75% of ancients renew, renew each year and, and stick with us. Um, all of our members get access to our dedicated team of business to business journalists. That's our small team of uh, five journalists and we work exclusively with Drum Network members. So um, what we can do is speed up the process. Um, so rather, rather than trying to fight through the Drum's editorial team to get your press releases and your insight pieces and your, your blogs and all these kind of things through, um, you'll get your own dedicated editorial contact within the drum network um, and they can look after all of your content, they can give you advice, they can shape content for you, they can edit pieces for you and get it posted up onto the drum website um, in a timely fashion. Um, all the drum network members also get a, a profile hub on the uh, on the drum website uh, which gives you a 24-7, 365 days a week uh, platform on there that uh, you can manage yourselves, you can update all of your agents information, um, you can um, upload case studies, um, information about the clients you work with, the uh, services that you offer and so on and all of the content that's posted um, by the Drum Network uh, writers is tagged and pulled into your profile hub to sit beside your own, uh, pulled into your profile hub so all of that content can sit beside your own content. So what it does is gives um, any potential clients who are checking you out a real kind of nice broad overview of what your agency is all about. Uh, the kind of clients you're winning, the kind of work you're doing, um, the opinions and the, the kind of insights that you've got as a business and new appointments. And what I'm going to attempt to do now, although I might regret this at uh, some point, is just uh, give you a quick uh, a quick demo of that. Um, I'm just on the Drum website now. And there we are. That's the story. There's a story there. Uh, Drum Network story just gone online just this uh, about an hour ago. Uh, from Cuckoo, so that was a press release that was sent over to us. Uh, I think Michael, one of our writers, uh, wrote that one up for Cuckoo, so you can see it's on the website now. Um, Michael wrote that up. Then if you, so it's obviously got obviously the story on there. Um, I suppose the, the intention is, or the, the way we, we envisage this working is that a client will see that and think, yeah, that's interesting, I'd like to know more about Cuckoo. So they can scroll down and uh, just uh, click through into Cuckoo's profile hub. There we are. That takes you into Cuckoo's profile hub. Um, there you can, as you can see, information about uh, Cuckoo, um, address details, clients, um, content stream. These are all the kind of pieces that uh, we've worked with on Cuckoo um, over the recent months. They're kind of the uh, skills that we've got, the sector exper experience that we've got. Also, um, all the kind of rankings from the various drum uh, census products that we do during the year. Uh, they all kind of flow into the product, uh, into the profile hub as well. So as I say, it gives any client checking out an agency just a really nice overview of, uh, of the agency. Uh, some of the, in fact, click into projects as well. Uh, this is where you can upload all of your kind of case study, um, case study uh, material. Um, so they can kind of see the kind of work you're doing as well. So as I say, it's a nice overview of what you're, what you're doing as an agency business. Um, okay, right. Let's go back into the presentation. There we go. Uh, yeah, these are uh, these are some of the other benefits you get. You get access to we do bi-monthly business jam events in London. These are full afternoon events, all based around kind of building uh, the best days you possibly can. So quite a lot of stuff on new business development, uh, maximising profits, recruiting, retaining staff, um, future proofing your agency, um, expanding globally, all those kind of things that most agencies are kind of. Uh, wrestling with at the moment, we kind of cover all those kind of uh, issues at the Business Jam events. 